Thank you again for taking time for for devotion to hear a portion of God's word and, and we'll continue to follow this story uh, told by the chaplain of the soldiers preparing for a great uh, battle as they begin to uh, as they will be engaging the enemy themselves but so far in their training in their preparation they're observing the effects that the wars already had on the land that they were in first in Ireland and now in England and um, instead of having a depressing effect and 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 for some it was and and yet for others um, they saw the fortitude of the of the people there the fortitude and we are witnesses of one and to one another of the fortitude that God works in us in us one of the images that we see um, that in the aftermath of protests um, that devolved devolved into into uh, destruction um, that during the day people in the community come out and sweep up the glass clean up the mess help board up the stores that were looted and this is the response that God would work in us not anger but rather to bring back some order um, to show that business owner that they are not alone um, in this misery and destruction and and that is one of the things that, that will be part of this the story today yesterday um, I shared that the, the um, men had surprisingly uh, been influenced um, and drawn to scripture uh, the scripture they heard in, in a movie um, where there was lamenting the, the scene in the bombed church with its damage uh, they were lamenting the loss that had come to the to the village uh, and as they had sought to go on uh, with normal activities and and summertime flower contest and that and yet uh, the war came near and and brought death dear death near to them and the passage that was shared was Psalm 91 um, I read a portion of it from the from the excerpt um, from the movie and the movie was Miss Mrs. Minear, uh, MRS, and then M I N E R, um, and you can find it on on YouTube, um, or some clips. But the pastor there, standing before the people, they came seeking solace in the church, in and with the community of believers. And that's what it means for us to be the church, that, that we come to that place where we hear God's word and we receive some comfort and some guidance. And it's a reminder that God is God and we are not. There is a God in whose shelter we can come to, in whom we hope and trust when, when everything is beyond our control. And it gives us strength to do our bit to do what we need to do to help others to provide for ourselves so here from psalm 91 the passage and then this is the new living translation those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty this i declare about the lord he alone is my refuge my place of safety he is my god and i trust in him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are our armor and protection. And, you know, if you were to take this literal, 
then it would be a formula for being protected from every ill, but no, what it's about is a relationship with God and his promises, trusting God and his promises, not fulfilled as we would have them, but trusting that God is doing good for us and through us for his creation, all of his creation that he loves. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day, nor dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so they won't even so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You'll be trampled you will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. Then they call. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will yet rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with long life and give them my salvation. That's the complete passage there. And the response that the chaplain noticed or experienced from the soldiers who uh, saw this movie and heard that read in context. Um, well, they wanted a copy of of the New Testament which included the Psalms which had that those extra readings and I encourage you to um, spend some time in the Psalms and, and find there's a variety there uh, from proclaiming the, the wonders of, of creation um, Psalm 104 that we read from last last Sunday and uh, the Psalm 191 which is a bit of a lament and yet proclaiming faithfulness in God, trusting in God, our, our Lord. And those men wanted to have that word in their own possession that they could read on their own and receive encouragement and support as they drew nearer to God, as they drew nearer to God, which is the, the topic of the, of the reading today from from the chaplain's journal, we could say. Surrounded by the ruins of the great Blitz of London stands St. Paul's Cathedral. Complete devastation bespeaks the horror that reigns through countless bombings. Nothing stands for blocks around nothing except St. Paul's Cathedral blackened now by the smoke of incendiary bombs and torn by the two bombs which hit it, but still practically unscathed. One cannot observe it without feeling as if here is a parable of enduring stone. St. Paul's, the great heart of London, the center of the people's faith, majestic still amid the ruins, but within its great quiet sanctuary, one forgets the ruins outside. True, there's a bomb hole through the side roof. A man stands awed before the great altar where a second bomb fell. But the altar still stands, its cross towering over the wrecks of time. Men and women still gather to worship before it within the stately hallowed walls as one leaves the quiet atmosphere and walks out of the to the scene of destruction 
one takes new courage. Here is living proof of the Master's promise. I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against the hope, the life we have with Christ Jesus. For he is the, the head and the heart of the church. Through the Holy Spirit breathes life, illuminating God's word, God's promises for us. As we, the people, empowered, entrusted with this word, empowered by it, are the church living and serving today uh, in our time and amidst the uh, turmoil and devastation that we are experiencing of in so many various various ways but none of us has escaped uh, the influence of the pandemic and our hearts are touched by the by the injustice of, of racism that that we had hoped and prayed was was eradicated from from such important organizations of our community uh, as the police force and yet um, again and again has has uh, shown up in the way that that cases have been treated involving African Americans or minorities and um, they are God's children too. They are God's children too and deserve the same degree of respect and um, non-prejudice but innocence, presumed innocent until the full investigation has taken place and the courts do their job. And so we have a system and a structure in this in this country that is based upon scriptural principles, um, time tested, uh, and yet can be corrupted by by human brokenness. And uh, we pray that 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 be resolved. That is what the protesters really desire: um, is there be an assurance that there will be justice that we will not continue to see. Um, such perpetuation of injustice and yet then there are those who are using this opportunity uh, to bring havoc and destruction um, who have no real heart for society and uh, we pray for those individuals um, that they, they are so lost in their understanding are not seeking to replace what is with something else but simply to, to bring, bring down and uh, Lord, we just trust them to you. We turn them over to you, Lord, and, and teach them and guide them. And, and uh, may they be teachable. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Just a little more of the story. It was natural in the great old churches of England that these men come closer to God at no time in history of the battalion had church attendance ever been this great than during those weeks in Britain. Men who knew that terrific things lay not many weeks ahead thought more seriously of God and their need for Him, a relationship with God and God's promise of forgiveness and salvation, of hope in life beyond this life. New experiences awaited them as they turned to the church. And as we've been adapting, might we imagine that new experiences await us that are blessing and rich with God's love, God's mercy, God's strength that we can rely upon. Let's pray. Almighty God, your majesty, your wonder, is proclaimed in all creation, in the skies, in the beautiful sunsets spreading across the sky, in the trees, in their shape, reaching for the sun, their fullness, and blown by the wind, yet 
remain strong and straight. So Lord, help us to be resilient in all the ways that we are affected and blown about, coming back to a true center in you, Lord, our strength, our hope, our refuge, and our peace. So Lord, for today and for tomorrow and for all the days to come, we turn and trust to you and that eternal hope of the life to come after we have served you and glorified you in this life through caring for one another and building up. Amen.